My name is Lisa Ross, though you may know me better as Paper Daisy Creations, and today we are working on the Coming Together Shawl, which is a super fun shawl to knit. It takes six colors and plays with all different textures um, and combinations of those colors, none of which are too difficult. And I'm here to guide you through uh, some of the techniques that might just be a little bit new to you. So we're going to work today on the plaid section of this design. And the plaid section uses two colors. It uses color six, which is this light Himalayan salt colorway, and color two, which is that brown kisses colorway. All of these colors are from Emma's yarn. So what we are doing is working a stockinette background in that color six, and then we'll work these garter ridges in color, or sorry, the stockinette background is in color two, and then the garter ridges are in color six. And those are going to look like they're laying on top of our um, color two by working slipped stitches. So these changes in color here are really just slipping stitches in the opposite color when you are working um, color two. And in order to create these elongated slip stitches, we have to wrap the yarn a couple times. And it's not difficult to do, but if you haven't done it before, I find that it helps to have a little bit of a visual. And so that's what I'm here to show you how to do. All right, so let's take a look at this current shawl. Now this one uses a different color combination. Emma's Yarn has put together some really beautiful color combos for this shawl, so I encourage you to check them out. Um, their yarn is available through fourpearls.com, and that's pearls, P-U-R-L-S. I'll put the link down below. So what I have here is my um, color two, which is my dark, um, it's a really dark gray, almost black color. And then my um, whisper colorway, which is the white right on top. Um, and that is uh, color six. So I've already worked my stockinette stripe, which is rows um, 103 and 104. Um, I've worked my garter ridge, which is rows 105 and 106. Um, I've worked my um, slipped stitches. Uh, and so to do that, I worked, um, I was working with the black colorway and just slipping these stitches with the black colorway held toward the wrong side. So when I worked across the right side, I held the yarn in back. And when I worked across the wrong side, I held the yarn in front. And what that does is it creates these little slipped stitches with the, um, with a little loop of yarn across the wrong side of the knit. I've already worked the first row um, of my white, which is, this is row, let me check the pattern, 109. So with this white colorway, I worked 109, which is really just that stockinette increase row or stockinette row um, where we increase at either end and work our central double decrease in the middle. And on the back of this, I'm going to be knitting in order to create a garter ridge, but I'm also going to be wrapping some stitches. And I'm going to show you right here, let me show you on the finished shawl what we're doing. So I am working on the back side of this garter ridge right here. And what I wanna do is line my wrapped stitches up with the uh, previous um, slipped stitches. And what that will do is create a continuous line as I work my way along the shawl. So I've already done these little slip stitches and now I'm going to be wrapping the stitches that line up with those slip stitches in order to create an elongated wrap um, that I'll be able to slip in just a few minutes. Okay, so I am ready to begin row 110, which is a wrong side row, so I have the wrong side facing, um, and I'm going to begin this row just like I have all the other rows with a knit one and KFB. So I knit into both the front and then the back of that stitch before I take it off. This row is worked mostly in garter stitch, so I will be knitting across the wrong side. Um, and I'm beginning with 
the KW3. And to do this, I'm going to be wrapping the yarn. So when I go into this stitch, instead of just knitting it, I'm going to wrap the yarn one, two, three times around the needle and then pull it through. And what that gives me is a three wrapped stitch that will easily come apart for slipping in just a few minutes. I'm going to knit two. And here you can see that this yarn has been slipped. And you can look at the front to see that that lines up. That yarn has been slipped. And the way I can tell is that it has this little white stitch around it instead of all these black stitches like I have on those other uh, stitches that are right next to it on the needle. So if you kind of look ahead um, at, your, at your work, you can see where the slipped stitches were. So I've got one here, 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 here. And the way I'm telling is because those have the little white bump around them instead of the black. So these are my slipped stitches with the white. And that's going to help keep me on track as I work these wrapped stitches. So I'm going to go into that stitch and instead of pulling up one loop, I'm going to wrap one, two, oh, two, three. And if you could see there, <laughs> I kind of dropped it. And that's why I use, I like to use my right finger to kind of hold it in place. And I'll show you how to do this um, English style in just a minute. So I'm going to wrap that yarn once, hold that yarn on there twice, keep it on there and three times. And I'm going to actually just keep my finger at the top of this needle um, so that they don't slide off. You can see they're going to want to try. So I do that and I've got my um, wrapped stitch. All right, I'm knitting four this time. I come up to my next wrapped stitch and I'm going to go in and wrap one, two, three times. All right, and this time I'm going to show you when I'm holding the yarn in my other hand. I am not particularly adept at English style knitting, so bear with me. But I know that it's helpful to see what it looks like from the other side. Look at my left hand trying to hold the yarn. All right, so I'm going into the stitch and instead of just knitting once, I'm going to knit one, two, three times. And for this one, I would hold it with my left finger and even just keeping your left finger at the point um, of that needle so they don't slip off, that'll really help. Oops. All right, let me pull those through and I'm going to show you that one more time. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and now I'm ready to wrap the stitch again. So I'm going to go around one, oops, two, three times around the point of that needle and pull that yarn through. Now it doesn't really matter if those wraps stay in order. You can see my, my sloppy English style knitting, um, getting all those wraps a mess, and that's okay um, for this design. The only thing you have to be careful about is your tension. You don't want it to be um, super loose or super tight. Uh, it should be consistent across the um, across the row. So as long as you're knitting it the same way and not too differently, um, it should be just fine. So I'm going to come up here. I wrap one, two, can't do it just with one finger, three times. And I can check that once I get it through that I've got three wrapped stitches right there. So I'm going to flip it over to the front just so you can take a peek at how this is looking on the front. And you can see right here that these stitches line up. See that triple, triple wrapped stitch right here? It goes right on top of that previous slipped stitch. So you can see how those line up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and work this to the end of the row and then I'll show you what we do on the other side. 
Okay, so row 111 is finished. I've got all of my wrapped stitches all lined up with my slip stitches, and I'm just gonna check those as I work this next row. It's going to help me um, ensure that I've got everything where it needs to be. So I'm going to begin the row that the way that I begin all of my rows where I'm coloring, where I'm carrying yarns up the side. And so I'm going to do this by doing a knit one. And then I'm going to work KFB, but before I do that, I'm going to take my um, my extra yarn, my white yarn that's not being used, and I'm just gonna cross it over before I work the knit part of my KFB. And what that will do is lock it in place. So it's just changing the position of the yarn in order to lock it into place. So I've done knit one, KFB. Then I'm going to knit one. And now I'm going to slip with yarn in back. So for the plaid section, we're always slipping with the yarn held towards the right, towards the wrong side. So I'm slipping with the yarn in back, this stitch. And as I slip it, it's going to pull those extra wraps off the needle. And I've got a super long stitch here, which is great because it's going to be slipped quite a bit. So I knit two slip one, dropping the other wraps. So don't go into all of those, just go into one part of the stitch and pull it off. Got one, two, three, four, and I'm going to slip that stitch. One, two, slip the stitch. Okay, and done with uh, the right hand throwing, it will be the same way. So let me switch hands here. And just slip that stitch. Slip the stitch. Okay, so I've just finished that row. I have um, worked my way across with color two. I've slipped those stitches, dropping the extra wraps. Right now, those stitches just look a little bit looser than usual, um, but they'll pull, be pulled tightly as I continue slipping them for several more rows. So I'm going to continue working that, following my pattern, slipping those stitches, stretching out those nice long floats. And the other thing that I wanna remind you is that it may look a little bit different than the finished pattern. And the difference is that this one has been blocked. So once you block your knits, you're going to get these nice, straight, even lines. Um, but until you block it, they may look a little bit loose or it may look a little bit sloppy. But just keep in mind that once it's blocked, you're gonna get that beautiful plaid um, for your coming together shawl. It's all going to come together. So. Um, you can find this pattern along with all of my other patterns on Ravelry.com and on PaperDaisyCreations.com. And I wish you all very happy knitting. Mm -hmm.